The person we have Michal, Michal from Denmark is here, also Johanan from Brazil I, is also here. And we'll start off, we'll see how things uh, progress. We believe the lost in tribes amongst Western nations. And we, this is what we do, this is what we have. I, or uh, also the people associated with me, I have dedicated ourselves towards believing and work towards promoting and uh, to cause this idea to penetrate into the, the consciousness of people in the West as much as possible. And we have a, a small rate of success, but we do do something. And it's there, it's uh, there, can expand in the future, can, uh, the ideas are out there, the information is out there, and there are plans to, may, to spread to a large, a large, a greater number of people, and uh, you don't know how things would do. At all events, we go, at all events, we do what we have to do. So we also, this is a meeting, we also will uh, accept uh, questions and answers and uh, make comments. So one thing of uh, interest, which is somehow related to what we're talking about, was a recent uh, question that we had concerning how will we know in the end times what specific tribe we belong to. I mean, we can bring, we bring uh, proofs, a lot of proofs from the different fields of study, from the Bible, from rabbinical sources, from archaeology, history, linguistics, uh, mythology, any field of study that is something somehow pertinent to what we're talking about, we look it up and we find sources that co corroborate what we are saying, and we bring all these sources together and show how one uh, uh, aspect of the evidence interlocks with the others, and they all form one composite picture. And we also attribute uh, the specific tribes to specific areas. We find tribes, tribal names, or names of uh, names of, of, of clans within the tribes in, in certain areas. We show how these clan names and these tribal names pertain to Israelite tribes, as uh, given in the Bible. And then we compare tribal characteristics and other aspects of national existence with those of the tribes as, as written in the sources, and we show how they correspond with each other, and therefore we can at least tentatively identify certain areas as belong to these white tribes. And it's from Mikko, it's from Denmark, we identify Denmark with Dan, because the name Denmark means Denmark, the border, the area of Dan. It's obvious, also they have uh, traditions that they descend from someone called Dan the Great, and they have other traditions and other aspects, other things that go on for them that all help us to identify Denmark with Dan. I can say that most people in Denmark probably be, uh, belong to the um, tribe of Dan, but we also have evidence that the other tribes there, for a while there were um, Jutes from Judah were there in Denmark. Also the Danish were in Sweden for a while before they moved to Denmark at least partially, also a lot of people from uh, Norway came to Denmark, we identified the Norway's, Norwegians on the whole, with the tribe of Naftali, but also with other tribes, and uh, every and every country in the world has a, uh, uh, is a mixed, is intermi it's mixed, it's mixed to, to some degree, people come in from outside, people go out, and we can show that on the whole, despite this apparently confusion in, in the genealogies, on the whole, most areas are relatively speaking homogeneous, homogeneous over a period of time. And uh, uh, tentative identifications are often prove themselves to be valid and they work. Uh, so therefore a person living in the said areas can assume that he belongs to the tribe that we identify that area with. But he, he can may also find him, himself feeling attached to other other Israelite tribes, possibly through names, through traditions, through personality traits, and so on. And so, in the end times, there are traditions that uh, people will know, that we may know to them what tribe they belong to. And Jewish traditions, we have a, you even have a law. Maimonides, Maimonides, he um. He, Maimonides lived in the 1200s. Maimonides 
11 38 12 04 so close enough he died in 12 04 but he was uh, in the medieval ages and he wrote a book the a large book a compendium compendium of jewish law which is uh possibly the most important book in jewish religious jurisprudence or it is one of three but uh, anyone who learns uh, who involves himself in Jew studies of judaism he has to use this work this work is a reference work it gives all the laws pertinent to judaism not most of them and it's written very well and he himself was a great scholar he, uh, he also wrote other works is from his works you can see he was very important he's an is well learned he is also the physician to salak adin salak adin was the king of egypt the king of the middle east the syrian the land was now israel in his time he fought against king richard the lionhearted and my and Mimundis was a his personal physician and advisor on some things is also according to tradition he met up with richard the first king of england who fought against salak adin and uh and Richard invited him to come back with him with England to England, but he refused. Uh, he wasn't interested, but uh, whether his religion is true or not, but he was a great man. He was a great man by the standards of his age and by the standards of all time, as may be seen by the books that he wrote. And he knew things. So he he says, he says, Maimonides' laws of kings and their wars in 12, uh, 3, he says, during the area era of the messianic king by messianic king he means uh, the messiah son of david once his kingdom has been established over all israel and all israel are gathered around him the israelite family heritage will be given by his mouth through the holy spirit that will rest upon him as the malachi the book of malachi chapter 3 3 says he shall sit as a refiner and purifier he will purify the lineage lineage of the Levites, so the tribe of Levi first, and he goes on. And uh, those whose those whose lineage and he purifies Levi first, and then he goes on to when he defines the lineage of the Israelites and make known their tribal lineage alone, stating he is from this tribe and he is from another tribe. And that's what he says. He says, first of all, the Messiah, son of David, you purify the tribe of Levi, because the tribe of Levi will have to be purified in order to serve in the temple. You say, who belongs to the tribe of Levi and who does not? Even now, a lot of families, Jewish families have traditions that they're from Levi. It's not certain if they are or if they aren't. Or so, so he'll tell which ones are and which ones are not and he will purify them in that way and also will tell each and every israelite which tribe they belong to so that is uh, accepted and uh, this is concerning the messiah son of david but we have another source we have another source which is called perke hakalot and this source is uh, somewhat esoteric it belongs to mystical literature uh, in uh, Judaism, you have a lot of people wrote a lot of things. Jews are intelligent people; they are literate, and they they write a lot. They study these matters, and also they were often oppressed, uh, they, and they were in uh, trouble and danger, and they were worried, or they wanted to know what would happen in the future, and they occupied with religious things, and they wrote. So there are a lot of things. A lot of things were written. And some things that they wrote are accepted, are revered as being inspired to some degree or reliable, and some things are not, or less so. The thing is relative. So what is called Pukka Hekalot are uh, esoteric words that not many people take much interest in, uh, but um, and also they're difficult to understand. They're somewhat uh, given to... Uh, trend of thought which uh, is speculative but nevertheless they're not they're not uh, disqualified they're still valid as reference points together with other information so we find in one of these uh, incidentally they and they date they date from unknown dates usually from 300 ce to 
the 900 CE, over 600 years, you don't really know when they, when they appeared, where they appeared from, but they're relatively early. So one of these, one of these is 40 years before the Messiah son of David, the Messiah son of Joseph will come and stand in Jerusalem and all Israel will gather around him, each man with his family and the family of Israel will bring sacrifice which will be pleasant to God, and all Israel will be uh, identified by their correct families. So this says that they, oh, every Israel in the time of the Messiah, son of Joseph, every Israelite will be told what tribe they belong to, what f tribal family they uh, pertain to. So it could be, as we often find, that these two apparently contradicting, contradictory sources uh, supplement each other, Maybe that the Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben Yosef, will begin the process. Mashiach ben David will complement it and bring it to its close by allowing all the Israelites to know which tribe they belong to. So that is a point of interest. And in the meantime, we, none of us can be certain which tribe we belong to, and we can't, don't even know. We don't even know uh, if we are descended from Israelites. We assume we are. We assume that we feel we should be. We identify, we have an inner instinctive uh, pull to what in this area. We we feel we know it. Maybe when parents who were Jewish or, Israel, or had the tradition said they were Israelite, maybe they always thought this, felt this way, maybe they did not. But then no one can be 100% certain that is uh, for bears were of Israelite stock. So even if that is the case, the Bible says that in the end times, when the land will be divided amongst the tribes, even people who are from outside will be given a, a portion according to the, the tribes that they dwell amongst. So through our studies and through other, other fields of evidence, a person can be relatively certain that he belongs to the Israelite tribes, and that the, the people around him also do. If he lives in an area identified as be, be pertaining to this lot tribes, he can be fairly certain that he too belongs to them. But even if you're not, we find in Ezekiel 47, 21, so you should divide this land among yourselves according to the tribes of Israel, and you should divide it by lot, by poor inheritance among yourselves and among the strangers who stay in your midst. So bring forth sons in your midst. And they shall be to you as a native born among the sons of Israel. They shall be allotted an inheritance to you among the tribes of Israel. And the tribe of which a stranger resides, there shall, you shall give him his inheritance, declares the Lord God. In other words, people who live with amongst Israelite tribes when they identified, even if he himself turns out some, by some trick of fate, that he is not descended, he must, if there is if his forebears lived in the area for a while and they married with him, so he must be. But if it turns out that somehow or other he is not, or through his father he is not, nevertheless he will receive a, a portion according to the tribe that he dwells amongst, and he will be considered as part of them. So that is an, uh, an important uh, thing uh, to, uh, to remember, that we are who we are, and if we are pulled towards this study, Toward, toward, towards this uh, field of learning. It means that our inner soul wants us to do so. We are being called out. We are the minority. We are the ones who go before the camp, who lead the way. And therefore, it is more difficult for us than it is for others. But so too, we have been chosen for a reason. To know this law, to know these secrets, to know, the, to understand this matter, that, that we and the people around us descend from the tribes of Israel. Now I had another question. So he says uh, he is uh, he was uh, someone in England. He said his descent is primarily of British, and his uh, family has followed the teachings of British Israel for some time. About a hundred years ago, there were almost a million followers of British Israel. Now there are only uh, a small handful, and even they don't really believe in it, or don't seem not to believe in it, not really interested in it, but occupy themselves with other matters. 
The one Tom was very important, and a lot of people believed in it. So he too was one of them. His family was one of them. And then he went and became a Mormon. Also, they, the Mormons also, believe in the form of, the, of British Israel. They believe that if you belong to their church, you are one of the tribes of Israel. You go before a certain person who is uh, consumed to have authority as matters, and he tell, he will tell you what tribe you belong to. So a lot of them, because of this, believe in the, lost, in the tribes of Israel, but they don't really extend it to others outside them. Though there are exceptions, there are exceptions. One of them did a, a Terry Blodgett wrote a, a very important linguistic work showing that the Germanic tongues, the northern tongues, had a Hebrew substratum. And so that, uh, and he also corresponded with us. So he too, he was a professor in uh, Salt Lake City. So he should do, should, should note that, the, that not everyone is the same. At all events, he says he personally, this person in England, he believes in Judaism. And he thinks he's thinking of conversion. And he's, but he asked, is a conversion uh, show, uh, pertinent to someone from Britain? Why, why is he asking that? Because according to what we say, what we understand from rabbinical sources based on the Bible, that in the end times when the uh, first comes the Messiah, Messiah, son of Joseph, then the Messiah, son of David, they will reveal to the ten tribes who they are, and after wars and all kinds of tribulations and, and uh, dramatic events, eventually, not only will the land of Israel be divided among, up amongst the tribes, but also the British Isles and the portions of Western Europe will also be considered part of the land of Israel. And apparently they too will be divided up amongst the tribes. So he is asking, in me if I'm British, and I believe in Judaism, but why should I convert? Because in the time of the Messiah, the Messiah will tell us who, who which tribe we belong to. And if the, the land I live in will also be part of the land of Islam. So he's asking, um, should I not stay as I am? Because in the end times, it's all going to be the same. So this is a complicated question. First of all, someone who wishes to convert to Judaism does so because they believe in it. They consider that it's what they should do because not everyone is suited to it. Not everyone has to do it, according to our understanding. We do not teach people to convert to Judaism. We do not encourage it. We do not discourage it. Someone who feels that this is what have to go in, they may, may they have good luck to them. They may go ahead, but we do not encourage them to do so nor discourage them to do so. This is not, we try not to be involved in it, even though we personally believe in it. At all events, if they do convert, they should become Jewish without reservation, not not have to any dichotomy about it, not, not be, have any uh, schizophrenic uh, attitude towards it. They should accept it and to do become as uh, Jews as well as they can. If not, not. Judaism belongs is dominated by the tribes of Judah and Benjamin and Levi, with the minority representations representatives of other tribes. Also, converts who have attached themselves to Judaism and become part of the Jewish people are also Jewish, and they also determine what goes on. And uh, they are accepted, and the Bible accepts, and the Bible allows them to do this, and the Bible recognizes Judah, all of Judah as Judah, as the Jewish people, more of the Jewish people as Judah, as we will see. The Judaism in principle is the the religion of all Israel, okay? Judaism is as close as we can get as the original origin religion of all of Israel. The last 10 tribes were separated. They went in their own, own pathway. They became a so suspended from association with the Jewish people with the, in the religious sense, suspended from the Torah. In the future, they will return and mean, meanwhile, Judaism has evolved, evolved according to the historical factors and evolved according to the people who composed it, according to, according to, according to the Jewish nation. It evolved more according to the character of the Jewish people because they are the ones who kept it and maintained it and developed it. 
And in the future, then, times stand to reason that adjustments will be made. It will be adapted to suit all of the tribes of Israel. But the basic uh, framework will remain. So those who uh, feel that way, they can wait and see how things turn out. No one really knows how things will turn out in the end times. Now, each one of us personally has his own pathway to follow. I cannot live your life for you, and you cannot live your life for me. You have to find your own way to do what you have, what your task is in this world, and to follow your own path. For some people, that may involve becoming Jewish. For others, they should they should stay as they are. This is out of the equation. This is not the equation that we're involved with. We're, well, either way, if they become Jewish or they remain non-Jewish, it behoves them, it will be good for them to be aware that they are of Israelite descent according to our teachings and to learn our teachings because this will add an, uh, an additional dimension to what they are and the God Almighty will guide them as to what they should do and how they should do it. Just a second, has anyone any questions at this stage? Or uh, comments? Uh, yes, Yair. Uh, did you say that Messiah ben Joseph would come 40 years before <clears throat> uh, Messiah ben David? Did you say that? Yeah, that's what the source I quoted said. Now, the source may not be 100% reliable, but it's said. That's what the source says. Oh, what source is that? It's uh, called Perkei Hekalot. It's like a kind of a, uh, it's like a, a kind of mystical tract, or a body of a large number of mystical tracts. It's a, the, the they, it might be based on um, on a type of fiction or truth or visions that people had. It's not a, it's not a hundred percent accepted, but it's not rejected. If you know what I mean. Okay, but uh, it's in the shady area. Okay. Whereas Maimonides, on the other hand, is right up there in front of what is legitimate. So, so, go ahead, sorry. But it, is this based on the, an interpretation of a, a scripture in the Torah? Any what? It is uh, 40 years based on the interpretation. Uh, well, uh, the 40 years uh, point, I don't know. Uh, uh, it could be, I don't know. So look into it. It's with, uh, maybe, maybe the, uh, maybe it's a tradition. Maybe it's an invention. We don't know. In the end times, they will return, apparently, each person will return and rejoin members of his own tribes. How this will happen, we don't know. We'll be moving about and so on, but uh, this is what will happen. Or maybe people will instinctively go go to places where their own tribe is dominant. Uh, that's another possibility. At, at all events, they will be made known to them which tribe they belong to in the end times. Meanwhile, we can get an approximation, a fair idea of what tr tribes we each individually are. But we will not know for certain until uh, until we come to the uh, Messianic age. Can I make a small point for you? Uh, is that possible? Yeah, go um, ahead. For go you ahead. to okay. Uh, what I'd like to think about the the, the different uh, aspects which make up the uh, you know the different tribes of Israel can only come into reality when when uh, Levi has received his heritage, you know, the Jew, the tribe of Judah restored the Jewish people back in 1948. Uh, and then, of course, but now everything revolves around the Temple Mount. So that is the key because you can't have any relationship in terms of uh, whether you are from Judah or whoever until the tribe of Levi have received their their inheritance. So that might be so that there is an aspect. How are you going, David? How are you? Good. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, here you can. Here you see you. Very good. You're looking good. Okay, it's good to see you too. Thank you. Anyway, Anyway, you're right, but this is that it says, as we said, when the, the, according to the, the source that we read out, based on Malachi, when the, the Messiah son of 
David uh, give, tells everyone what tribe they belong to or confirms the identifications they already may have already received. He begins with the tribe of Levi. He too, you know, they too say so really re recognize the fact, as you said, that the tribe of Levi is the most important, the most important that they know who they be, with, who they are, have it confirmed to them, and this is this will be getting out of the each one of the tribe of Levi has been confirmed in in his tribal heritage. The same principle will be applied to the rest of Israel. In conclusion, we may suggest the following. We saw that one opinion said that the Messiah, son of Joseph, will uh, enable each and every Israelite to know which tribe they belong to. And the other opinion said that it would be the Messiah, son of David, who will do that. And we re were able to reconcile the two by concluding that the Messiah, son of Joseph, will begin the process. Messiah, son of David, will complete it. The Messiah, son of Joseph, Mashiach ben Yosef, is also linked with the temple. And through the temple, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of Levi consisted of Cohen's and his priests who offered up the sacrifices, and Levites who also officiated and helped out at the temple, who helped keep the temple functioning. And they are associated with the service of the temple, and uh, it will be necessary to clarify who really is descended from the tribe of Levi, who belongs to them, who is a Cohen and who is not, who is a Levi and who is not, to make sure of this. And uh, the Messiah, son of Joseph, will have to know this in order to complete the uh, reconstruction of the temple and the, the institution of the service in the temple. So therefore we may conclude that he will be the one who will begin the process. He will first of all begin with Levi, as, uh, as the tradition said they would. They said that it would begin with Levi and has to begin with Levi, Messiah, Messiah, Messiah Ben Yosef, rebuilds the temple and uh, reinstitutes the sacrifices and the service are in the temple. So the two are connected, the two interlocked, and once he does that for the tribe of Levi, he can do it for the rest of the tribes, and that is apparently what the sources are indicating. So we see that the Messiah, son of Joseph, will begin the process, apparently will begin the process of telling each of the tri Hebrews what tribes they belong to, and, uh, be, and this is a process of redemption. And we also see that what Brit Am is doing by studying the tribes, informing people about the findings concerning the tribes, indicating what tribes, individuals or groups of people may belong to, and taking an interest in it, and uh, working towards furthering public knowledge of it. This is all part of the process of redemption. This is what Brit Am is doing, and strives to do and endeavors to do and succeeds to some degree in doing, at least making initial effort, initial attempt, breaking the ground as if to say. And this is what we do do. And this is part of the process of redemption, the process of liberation for all of the Israelite nations, from bringing all of us back to the truth, back to the Bible, back to the God of the Bible. And by helping Brit Am, you will be helping in this. Do not disparage it. Let it not be little in your eyes, because this is a great thing, and great things may come from it. You never know. Our movement, Brit Am, Hebrew Awareness, researchers and whereabouts of the Lost Ten Tribes. We strive for a spiritual rapport between Judah, that is the Jews, and Joseph. Especially Joseph, but also the other tribes of Israel, amongst the Lost Ten Tribes. The name Brit Am appears in the Bible. We call our, our association Brit Am. It appears in the Bible. It is translated in the Bible. The English translations of the Bible is a covenant of the people, uh, which is mentioned in connection with the Lost in Tribes. Brit Am also connotes Britain and America. Brit Am, Britain and America, the two main nations of Joseph in our time. By Brit, Britain, that also includes the offshoots of Britain, that is Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and other areas, and Canada. In Isaiah uh, 42 it says, Isaiah 42 verse 6, 
I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand and will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, so it's a Brit Am, he's talking to the Lost Ten Tribes. As a light to the Gentiles, the task of the Lost Ten Tribes was to elevate the nations, elevate the Goim, elevate the Gentiles and bring them closer to the truth to deliver all the earth. That is what it was the task of the Lost Ten Tribes was and that was why they went into exile. And this is not yet... Uh, this may have been an idea of ours, but uh, other rabbis, as we Rabbi Moshe Valley and others, wrote of this long before us. It was known as part of the Bible. It's found in the Bible. Isaiah 49 verse 8 says, Thus says the Lord, In an acceptable time I have heard you. In the day of salvation I have helped you. I will preserve you and give you as a covenant to the people. I will preserve you and give you as a covenant to the people in Hebrew, a Brit Am, Brit Am, covenant of the people, to restore the earth, to cause them to inherit the desolate heritages, to come back to the land of Israel, to receive once again their tribal inheritances, and also to have the lands they already dwell in incorporated within that spiritual being of the greater land of Israel. That spiritual and geographical real physical existence when the earth and heaven come together through the lost ten tribes of Israel. Thank you, may the Lord God of Israel bless you.